Hi, my name is Jeremy Cook, and this is part two of my Clear Beast assembly, my Clear Walker. You can see here I got it last time to a point where I could stand up on its own, and this time you can see I actually get it walking around. So the beast started in part one by having it cut out on a water jet machine. Obviously this simplified the build quite a bit, but at the same time it still quite, it took quite a while to get it to, to even up to a point where it would rotate on a stand. I got it working somewhat, but the goal was to get it walking on the ground. So the first thing I did was redid the body and actually put some, put a piece of polycarbonate on the bottom so that it would support that better. I thought this would help keep things in line better, keep that, that coupler from breaking. Once the bottom was, was cut out, it was time to cut out the side pieces with notches. That way I could just put zip ties in and it could attach them together. What I'm doing here is a technique called plunge milling, where you plunge different things down, kind of like a drill bit, and then the way I did it, I just kind of went over it afterwards, back and forth, to clean out the middle pieces. Zip ties held it pretty pretty well. And then the rods, rods went in. And then uh, there I am putting some more zip ties on, putting the final touches, I guess. And then I put that back, and as you can see here, I'm still using, you can just barely see, I'm still using the beam coupler, which, again, was, was prone to break, and I'm going to replace that with uh, something called a Lovejoy coupler, or a a uh, elastomer coupling, which I think Lovejoy is a trade name, but anyway, it, it's kind of known as that. So there I am tightening, tightening that up, and it seems to work, seems to work pretty well. In fact, I worked under motor control. But somebody pointed out that it's not actually walking like a normal strand beast, so I had to put some more holes in the middle of these linkages, and actually put another linkage through. Cut this with a 13 millimeter drill bit, so that it have nice, nice clearance for the half inch rods that I put in there and it fits nicely and there I am hooking it up again and once it gets hooked up and starts rolling around it you'll notice that it actually behaves more like an actual strand beast linkage the legs looks looks pretty nice and looks nice with four four legs as well now as I mentioned before the type of coupler I was using a, a beam coupler or a helical coupler wasn't working too well so this elastomer coupler that I used worked a lot better. Only thing was I couldn't find one that went from a half inch to I believe a six millimeter for the motor. So I had to modify one myself. This was pretty easy with my lathe. I used a, a drill bit and then reamed it out with a 501 reamer, which I had left over from something else on this project and it turned out to be worked pretty well. And there I am attaching the motor, motor in. Wish I put some holes in there earlier too, so I had some room to put it in there, but Anyway, went in the right, used uh, that scale to space it out a little bit, and at this point it worked pretty well. You can see the linkages, it's, the legs, um, how it's moving looks a lot more like an actual strand beast. You can see another view of it here. And at that point it was time to try it out, which was my first failure. So it was time to go to go back to the drawing board. Now as you can see here, the legs, they're very strong in the front to back direction, but side to side, they're, they're very, they tend, tend to buckle. So I had some spacers that I had already made, kind of anticipating this problem. I thought I could leave them off, but it just wasn't the case. So what I did, I glued them on, clamped them and glued them on, and let them dry, and then and tried it again. Thought this would fix the problem, but you know, you can see it's kind of buckling a little bit still here, and it's just not not good enough for, I mean, it's not going to support batteries and stuff. So back to the drawing board. My next thought was that I could lighten things up a little bit, cut off the rods that were offset here. And I'm sure that helped some, but it wasn't really the game changer that I needed. Another thing that I did, I tightened the axes down with this, uh, this clamp. I thought if I tightened it down and, and kept it very tight, it'd, it'd keep it from wobbling around so much at that axis and on the, at the slower axes as well. The problem is that increased the friction quite a bit. So I had to turn the motor up to get it to go at all didn't really work as well as I wanted. So it was back to draw the drawing board once again. This time I decided to reduce weight a little bit further by using some carbon fiber rods that I had left over for another project in place of the, the axes, the, the aluminum axes. And I, I actually used quite a few bearings too. So you can see me here replacing one of the axes with axes with a carbon fiber rod. And uh, looks pretty nice there. The carbon fiber looks, I don't know, looks like a snake or something. It's one of the coolest things humans have created as far as I'm concerned, you know, 
I mean, you know, I guess there's the pyramids and stuff and, you know, fine art, but as far as the mechanical stuff, can't really beat carbon fiber. So then I stuck this on with a shaft collar, making sure not to tighten it down too much to break the carbon fiber. Even though it's really strong, you know, in that direction, it could be bad. And after this, after all those bearings, that carbon fiber, it looks like it's working really well. In both, both directions, forward and backwards. This did improve things some, but unfortunately it wasn't quite as stable as it needed to be. The, the legs were still buckling somewhat. So it was back to the drawing board once again. This time I decided that I could put some supports on on the, the lateral direction, the side-to-side -side direction, and stick it on with some, some epoxy. I don't know why this hadn't occurred to me before. I was thinking maybe I'd have to stick it down with uh, zip ties or something, but this epoxy worked, worked really well. I fastened it down with some, uh, some masking tape to begin with. And this time I just did these, these linkages. I thought that's maybe the most critical. Oh, had it wired up wrong. I probably did this more than once, but just showed it there. And again, it was vastly improved, but it just wasn't, wasn't quite working as it should have. So back to the drawing board once more. So after all this work, this time I finally had some idea of what, what would probably work. I, I put some more supports on, this, this time on the lower legs that were pretty long, and on the a side support as well, or on one of the top supports of the triangle. And after that, I actually decided to test it out again. And you can see it's actually a successful attempt. Pretty awesome walking forwards, and then backwards in just a second. So awesome I took two views of it. Why not? That's uh, my first successful test. That was indeed a successful test, but at the same time, my job's not quite done on this. What you can see here is it being remote controlled by a phone, a, a smartphone over Bluetooth. In the next video, I'm going to expand on how I did this and all the things that, that come next, like some lights, a head, a tail. So if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe to see what's next or just check back. Even give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.